so a bunch of different functions and you perform some sort of operation, such as addition or subtraction. So you might add two um, functions or subtract two functions. And then function, um, operation, multiplication, and division. You might multiply two functions. You might divide two functions. Remember, when you divide two functions, you've got to restrict the domain, meaning the x values, the input, because we cannot divide by zero. So we always, when we divide, we will restrict our domain, meaning say when we when our x values are not available, meaning it would make our denominator zero. So that's a fraction with a zero in bottom, that's the problem. And then function composition. This was on the final exam. We didn't do so hot. So hopefully we'll get a good review. Okay, here are my first few examples here. So if you want to just watch, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to write them down. So given f of x is equal to 2x minus 1, g of x is equal to 3 minus x squared, and h of x is equal to negative 2x. These are three different functions. We're asked to perform this operation, f plus g of x. Well, remember, guys, we can just rewrite this. What this really means is just f of x plus g of x. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, so that's pretty easy. What is f of x? Well, it's 2x minus 1. So we have 2x minus 1. And then we're adding g of x. And g of x is 3 minus x squared. Now from there, you're going to write it in standard form. So combine all that terms. Starting with the highest degree, it's x squared. In fact, it's negative x squared. No other x squared, so I still have negative x squared. Then 2x's, no other x's, and it was positive, so positive 2x's. And then negative 1 plus 3 is... 2, positive 2, so plus 2. This is our answer. That's f plus g of x. Questions? Pretty simple. So now we're asked to find, if you look over here, just a different way of asking the same question, but a little bit more. f plus g of 1. So we are asked to find f plus g. Well, didn't we already do that? But now I want to know, what is f plus g of 1? So what do you think we're going to do? Plugging 1 into x wherever there's an x. So I'm gonna, anytime we make a substitution, guys, we use parentheses. So we're going to have negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1. We're plugging in 1 wherever there's an x. And then plus 2. we got to be careful here. Working our way through this. 1 squared is 1, right? Right here, guys. 1 squared is 1. So we have a negative plus. Negative 1. Very good. Question on that piece. And then 2 times 1 is, so plus 2, and then we have plus 2. So let's go ahead and add that. 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So f plus g of 1 is 3. Questions on that? Pretty easy, right? Okay, I'm just going to do one subtraction one real quick. We'll go through it quickly here. H minus G of X. The reason I'm doing subtraction is a little bit trickier. you got to be a little bit careful. So really we're just doing H of X minus G of X. So H of X is negative 2X. And then minus G of X. Now this is where most students make the error. We're subtracting all of G of X, right? So we have to put G of X in parentheses. G of X is that. So we have 3 minus x squared. Does everybody see why I put parentheses around that? We're subtracting all of g of x, right? Okay, so now from here, there's a couple different ways we can look at this. I think most of you like to look at this as technically then we have a negative 1 being multiplied in front here, right? So let's just read negative 1 through. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative x squared. Positive x squared. Does everybody see how I took care of the negative 1? Any questions? And then in front, we still have our negative 2x. So then from there, we'll combine like terms, put it in standard form. x squared, no other x squared. And then minus 2x. And then minus 3. This is h minus g of x. Questions? Ask if you do. No one's going to judge you. Everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, I wish I would ask that. Okay, so h... Minus g is 0. Well, we already did h minus g of x, so now we're just plugging in 0. So 0 squared minus 2 times 0, and then minus 3. Plugging in 0 wherever there's an x. So we have 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, so minus 0 minus 3. 0 minus 0 is 
Zero minus three. Negative three. Do you have any questions? Okay, last one, then I'm gonna let you work for quite a while. Stay with me, please. Last one, this one's the next trickiest one, I guess I would say. So given f of x, g of x, h of x, find g divided by f of x. Well, really, this is just um, g of x divided by f of x. So g of x is on top, so we have 3 minus x squared on top. On bottom, we have f of x, which is 2x minus 1. Now, with division, we could run into some problems if the bottom equals 0, right? So we've got to restrict our domain. So if the bottom was equal to zero, that'd be a problem. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go off to the side and say, so two x minus one, when is that equal to zero? Now solve for x. Add one. So we have two x is equal to one, divide by two. So x is equal to one half. If x is equal to one half, then that bottom part is equal to zero. So this is our answer, as long as x does not equal one half, because if it did, our bottom would be zero. Questions on that? Are we all good with that? No questions. Okay. Now it says find g divided by f of 1. We already did g, g divided by f, but now we'll plug in 1. I'm not going to go through that part. I think you guys are good. Okay, do 1 through 7. So here are the procedures for the class. You try it by yourself first. Then second, check with the people around you. Did they get the same answer? Why or why not? And then once you've agreed or had a few people check with you, then you can check with me. Ready, set, go. Okay, so now function and composition. This is an operation as well. Um, one of the more hard concepts for students to really grasp. It's a super important one though, and I'm hoping that once you see it a second time today, you'll feel more comfortable. So function composition is just we're composing a new function from another set of functions, and how we do that is we substitute in one function into the other function wherever there's a variable. So just like we were substituting in like a nine or a zero, and wherever there's an x, we're going to substitute a whole function in for x wherever there's an x. So here is my first example, guys. So given f of x, g of x, and h of x, these three different functions, we're asked to find g o f of x. Now, that little o is like an open circle. That is not multiplication. This is function composition. Now, remember, the easiest way to do this is to rewrite it a little bit prettier. So g o f of x. We can rewrite that. Switch x back in with f. That would be f of x. Is everybody good with that part? Squish it back in one more time. You're squishing it back into g. So we're doing g of f of x. This is one of those times there shouldn't be talking. Is everybody good with g of f of x? So right, just like if we had g of 0, we would plug in 0 in for g wherever there's an x. But we're not talking g of 0, we're talking g of f of x. So we're substituting in f of x wherever there's an x. So we're substituting it in right there. Is everybody comfortable with what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're substituting, and any time we substitute, we use parentheses. So we're going to have 3 minus, we're plugging in this in for x. So we're going to have that, that. 2x minus 1, we substituted it in for x, squared. Is everybody comfortable with that? No questions. We're all good? Okay, so then from there, I would expect you to simplify it a little bit better. And uh, this one's pretty rigorous. I mean, so we would have, first of all, we could rewrite this as 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. So we could distribute, that would be 4x squared minus 2x. Minus 2x plus 1, right? I'm going to combine my terms. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Does everybody see how I just simply simplified that piece? Yeah? Okay. So then from there, it was subtract all that stuff. So subtract all that stuff. And the 3 was in front. So then we could continue to simplify this. That's like having a negative 1. So we'll have negative 4x squared plus 4x minus 1, and then we don't we have this 3 in front. So that combines all like terms here. We have negative 4x squared, and then we have plus 4x. Just combining like terms. 
And then 3 minus 1, or 3 plus negative 1, however you want to say it, which is 2. So plus 2. This is G O F of X. Everybody comfortable with that? Okay. So what if we were asked to find F of F of X? Now it's just written already squished it for us. So we're plugging in, we're substituting in F back into F. Well, the easiest way for you to see this is to say, okay, so f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. My smart word. It's really just this class that it does it in. Just a sec. Okay, so I rewrite f of x again. So I have f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. I need it twice because I'm plugging it into the other function. So f of x back into f of x. So I'm substituting in f of x back in to f of x, wherever there's an x. So that's why I'm making the substitution. So instead of x, we're rewriting x as 2x minus 1. So we have 2 times, 2 times, that substitution of 2x minus 1, and then we still have minus 1. Does everybody see where I made the substitution? We'll distribute that through, that's 4x. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 1. Combine like terms, 4x minus 3. This is f of f of x. Everybody comfortable? We're all good? Okay, do you, I want you to skip to the back page and do 10 through 12 real quick. Ready, set, go. Give you a couple minutes and we're moving on. Things, you'll want to watch this example. So given these three functions, we're asked to find f of g of 1. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. This is function composition by definition. We're plugging in g of x into f of x. That's one way of doing it, and then we can plug in 1. But there is an easier way with this. What you can do is say, what is g of 1? Okay, so I'm going to focus from inside out. What is g of 1? So we're doing 3 minus 1 squared. I'm plugging in 1 into g. Is everybody comfortable with what I'm doing here? So really we have 3 minus 1, which is... 2. So technically, don't we have f of 2? Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, that's pretty easy. Plug it in for f. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 and then minus 1. Well, that's pretty dang easy. 4 minus 1 is 3. Do you see how to do it, guys? Do you need another example? If not, I won't sit up here and waste my breath. How many of you feel comfortable to go? Awesome. Then I'll let you work. Ready, set, go. We want your nine on the back. Work from the inside out. 